You ready? Ready! Nothing really phases Ridley in terms of how we're going to do this. Watch out! He has an idea of exactly what he wants to do. We know what we want Mars to look like, we know what it should look like, yet he always brings something else to the table just to make it that much more exceptional. This will come as quite a shock to my crewmates, but I'm still alive. Surprise! David Cohen from Variety here, and this is Artisans. Director Ridley Scott made his mark in the science fiction genre more than 30 years ago with Alien and Blade Runner. In 2015, he gave us a more optimistic space adventure, The Martian. Our guests this week are the film's visual effects supervisor, Richard Stammers, and virtual production supervisor, Casey Schatz. They revealed some of the secrets behind the look of this near-future epic. As I recall, there are three distinct sets of uh, visual effects environments. You've got Earth, space, and Mars. Yeah. Tell us about the challenges and the, and the exciting things of each. I think creating Mars is, was, for me, was the most exciting challenge, definitely, because we're going to another planet and we're collaborating with NASA and trying to create this beautiful landscape that's also foreboding because it is the thing that Watney is constantly battling with throughout the film. Mars will come to fear my botany powers. All the atmospheric effects, the storm, are all important challenges to overcome and all very exciting. Whilst we had beautiful photography, fantastic plates that we shot in Wadi Rum in Jordan, the ground is brilliant. The choice of location was exceptional. A lot of similarities, although a lot of bushes, you know, things like that had to go. So what's really going to add to this? He really wanted to add unique cloud formations to make the skies look more romantic than a very plain, dusty sky, for instance, which you see in a lot of marsh images. So much of the Mars work sort of bounces off Matt Damon's performance. Matt Damon is just such a wonderful actor. Most of his performances were captured on a green screen soundstage where he had none of that view. And we did most of that work before going on location to Jordan. So he hadn't seen the real vistas. To me, it's just a testament of him as a great actor that he's responding to the open void of loneliness of the planet within the confines of a big green box. Hey. For me, actually, one of the hardest things was just the time constraints that we had. We had to be very, very careful with the planning. How bad were the time constraints? Most films we would spend 18 months on from start to finish, including prep, um, shoot and post. Um, this one we completed in a year, so we're already sort of constrained there. We started out with a 28-week post-production schedule. They decided to bring the release date forward a little earlier, cut off another six weeks, so we got curtailed somewhat. In the face of overwhelming odds, I'm left with only one option. I'm going to have to science the hell out of this. Given we had quite a short schedule, a lot of our, particularly our um, zero gravity sequences where the actors needed to be on wires, we really needed to work out early on what we needed to do. We hired Casey Schatz to um, take our previs that was done by a company called Argon, and he broke it down into what we call a tech viz. Right. Let's do the math. So previs has its roots in storyboarding and uses computer animation to test shots or full sequences before ever setting foot onto a live action set. TechViz assumes that we've already pre something and now it's how do we, as a company, as a production, how do we make this happen on set? With the zero-G space sequences, we were interacting with the art department that built these really incredible pieces of the Hermes spaceship. Then I was also working very closely with stunts. <laughs> The set was like a large clock. There were so many intermoving parts. And all of these things were meticulously programmed based on the approved previews that Ridley had seen. He found a way to make all of those bits of technology communicate with each other. The great thing about it is our rehearsal time was very short as it is, and we were able to expedite that into a much shorter schedule. Woo! In your face, Neil Armstrong. This looks to me like a movie that's, that's likely going to hold up and probably not look quaint in 15 or 20 years. I hope so. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's hard to think of, you know, how your work is going to stand the test of time. And I always do try and do the best work that we can with the resources available. And, uh, you know, trying to get something as, as realistic as possible is an important part of that. Um, for any visual effects supervisor, contributing to a film like this is very important. It's incredible that you have to maintain such high standards that hopefully it will stand the test of time. Tell my family, I never stop fighting to make it home.
Please share this video with your friends, click like, and tell us what you think in the comments. We love making these artisans videos, and when you share them, like them, and comment on them, you help us keep on making them. For more on visual effects, click on the box on the left to go inside the latest Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens. Click on the box on the right to see more on the dinosaurs and environments of Jurassic World. To never miss an Artisans video, click on the subscribe button that'll sign you up for the Variety Channel. There's a new Artisans video every week, so come back soon. Thanks for watching.